he was a man of peace at a time of war. But people did not listen to him. They went on to fight and so many people were killed. Being a pacifist doesn't mean that you have no courage or that you don't uh, stand up. But he, he didn't like this fighting. He said, no good will come of it. As it was, you see, the hundreds of years of terrible wars and many hundreds and thousands of cross of people being killed. There are many young people who know very little about Insa Khan. A lot of people in the country know his great hymn, uh, the Ahum. But that is often as far as the knowledge goes. So we thought we had uh, an opportunity here to fill a niche. Nzikana was born at the end of the 18th century. He's regarded as the first Christian prophet in the Eastern Cape. Well, he saw um, a snake, you know, running, you know, with uh, smoke on, 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 on its head. And the interpretation of that was, you know, the coming of the uh, steam trains. He said that the, the country would be crisscrossed with, with white trails. He, he, he was anticipating roads. And he also saw um, a button, you know, without a hole. And the interpretation of that was, you know, uh, the coming of a new economy. He said that children would have smoke coming out of their mouths, as though he understood the drug culture. The other thing which he also saw was the um, a maize cob with long fiber. And the interpretation of that was the coming of the, the missionaries. Then he himself wrote music. So there are four great hymns that the, the country knows. Traditional Nkosa music was already in danger of being forgotten when Dave Dargi started his research in the 1970s. In workshops, together with Oswald Hilmer, he encouraged Nkosa people to compose their own church music. They had this meeting to publicize this new mass by Tiamzashi. And um, some of the songs, they were all, all the songs were very nice. But one was very special. That has become quite famous. <clears throat> so that was really Kosa. It had a bit of Kosa rhythm. And it had the Kosa chords and scale a little bit. So um, I asked Hirma, what does this music come from? And he said, Chamzashe said that it's uh, based on the music of the prophet in Zikana. Now I got very excited about Nsikana's music and I was hunting for more versions, traditional versions of it and I found a number of other versions. <laughs> Then I found old ladies who sang it uh, down below Lumko, further down the river. They'd never heard of Nsikana. They were singing, the hands are wounded, but they didn't know they were singing about Christ's hands. <laughs> Wherever I went after that, I was asking about Nsikana's song. And uh, so I asked them, they, do they know Ngomaga Nsikana? Then I, I started singing. One lady says, I am denial, I've got it. And she started singing. So they didn't know it was a religious song or a Christian song, but they knew it was a Kosa song. So they put their own words in, as they do with Kosa songs. So, uh, I've hidden the monkey nut. So 
the first part was actually the uh, part which he was using for calling people to come. Sell all the time. So people believe that, you know, that is sell, because if you listen carefully to the tone of that sell, you know, it, it starts from high to low. So they believe that, you know, it, it resembles a ringing of a bell, like ding dong. It's very similar to this fun song they use for drinking, but uh, if you if you if you hear the two, you would not connect them. But it's the same melody. Nsikana's life story is closely connected with the great hymn. He was directly called by God and not Christianized by European missionaries. And he went to a wedding. And the people were dancing, and Tsikana was a famous dancer, and he had his two wives with him and his riding ox, and suddenly there was a terrific wind, so strong that people fell to the ground. And uh, this happened three times. And then Tsikana announced that he was going home. So on his way home, um, he stopped um, at one of the river, and then, you know, he had imbola, you know, that clay which they actually smear on the, on the faces. So he washed himself, you know, and people believe that that was the baptism that he baptized himself when he did that. Because after that, you know, when he went back home, in the evening, they said he did not sleep. People heard him, you know, humming a song, singing, you know, humming, you know, with no words. So he hummed the song until it was early morning. He was actually calling people to come, you know, that, you know, uh, he was actually pointing at himself that, you know, please come and listen to me because, you know, there is something which has entered in me, you know, and I would like to tell you about this thing. And he was actually now pointing up, you know, uh, to the sky that, you know, there is God and people must pray to God. The students that perform in the opera company are from the region where Nzikana lived. Many of them study at the universities in Grahamstown and at Fort Hare. Okay. Slow, okay. but flowing. Okay. We started the company with students who were already registered for vocal studies at Rhodes University. Then we supplemented the numbers with students from the townships in Grahamstown, Alice and East London. die Talente, man könnte sagen, direkt von der Straße weg. Die schauen, wer es gut oder fragen eben Leute, die bei ihr schon in der East Cape Opera Company sind, ja, kennt ihr jemanden, der gut singt und Lust hätte, mitzumachen? Und da bekommst du dann ein entsprechendes Training und manchmal bringt es die Leute dann eben nach Fort her und da kriegen sie dann eine entsprechende Ausbildung. unterschiedlich. Da haben wir einerseits Leute aus den Townships, manche Leute mit einer guten Schulbildung, andere Leute wiederum kommen aus irgendwelchen Dörfern und da schaut es natürlich mit dem schulischen Background nicht ganz so gut aus. Wir haben zum Teil nicht mal eine Ahnung von der traditionellen Musik. Von der Schule her gibt es keine richtige Musikausbildung. Ganz besonders in diesen sogenannten Black Schools. Das heißt, die müssen hier erstmal erst antrainiert werden an der Umhadi und der Umhube, an diesen traditionellen Bögen, die man hier im Eastern Cape hat. Ich 
immer für Afrika interessiert, habe aber in Anthropologie studiert und Musikwissenschaft. Und das erste Mal bin ich nach Afrika gekommen äh, durch meinen Swahili-Lehrer in München nach Tansania und habe da auch Trommelbau gelernt. Das ist einfach ein Kuh. Und das ist auf jeden Fall ein großer Trommeltyp für die Ibubu, die man hier hat. Das ist das genau das Richtige. Ich, mein, ich habe auch schon Roma gesehen und oft gegessen, wer vielleicht das als Ziegen hat gemacht. Allerdings eher ostafrikanischer Typ. Wobei die Ibubu, die es hier auch spielen, auch beidseitige Bespannung hat. Das heißt, diese ganzen Flusen wegkriegen, das wird alles weggeschnitten. Auf die Art und Weise kriegt man eine bessere, bessere Haut. Klingt dann auch besser. Ich habe mal ein Experiment gemacht und eben dann den Trommeltyp nachbauen lassen. Von Leuten aus Malawi, Südafrika und Zimbabwe. Das war echt interessant, weil jeder noch ein bisschen was dazu beigetragen hat. Die haben ihn nicht gekannt, den Typ. Aber jeder hat was gewusst zu irgendwelchen Fernbearbeitungstechniken. Performing a Nkosa story confronts the students with their own traditional background. Das Problem ist einerseits äh, das Fernsehen. Das heißt, da sind die jungen Leute, wie man heutzutage mit anderen Leuten, jungen Leuten umgeht. Äh, man hört moderne Musik, hauptsächlich äh, Hip-Hop beispielsweise. Und traditionelle Musik ist ein bisschen so hinterwäldlerisch. Und natürlich der Lifestyle, der sich hier ändert. Die Leute wollen lieber Superstar werden mit moderner Musik als irgendein UHD-Player, der irgendwo im Dorf sitzt. Unfortunately, the Forte students can all play indigenous instruments, so it doesn't have to be arranged for them. We've already experimented and they, they can just accompany themselves and sing. The university program offers courses in African and in European music. And it became clear in the beginning that the Corsa students wanted to learn Mozart, uh, Verdi um, and Puccini and the English-speaking and Afrikaans-speaking students were quite attracted to the Corsa operas. And this actually made for a very interesting process. The students are very much involved in the composition process because uh, we talk about the music of Nsikana and we talk about the scenario. This is a wedding. Now the students will come up with uh, quite a number of songs that would be sung in a wedding. So that's how we compose the whole opera. The choruses, because they will be sung by the villagers, they will be in closer. And the arias and some of the ensembles, because they will be having a message, they will be sung in closer and also be translated to English. The Nkosa language is a Bantu language with click sounds. Yet, the clicks have been taken over from Khoisan language peoples who originally inhabited the south of Africa. And one of the choruses is actually composed to have clicks. It's called Amak Baba Kabimbola. So that song will be sung and it will be very interesting to have the audience to have to have them to try and pronounce those words. Sing. 
and we also have some of the cliques that have itoto, litota, amakoto. So those songs will be part of the, the repertoire. Yay. I found it's better if I lift the sort of middle back as it time. And then you start shaping the mouth. Nkosa music is also known for having its own techniques of overtone singing. The University of Fort Hare tries hard to keep this tradition alive. And your tears will run. The story of Nzikana is also about a rivalry between prophets and their political influence. Nkele was the antagonist of the peacekeeping prophet Nsikana. Nkele, you know, he was also known as a war doctor because with his prophecy was mainly, you know, um, to encourage people to fight. This guy remembered that this missionary had said that people will rise from the dead. So he started saying the ancestors will rise from the dead and chase the British into the sea. When they went to attack, you know, the British, you know, the ancestors were no, nowhere to be, to be found or to be seen. So many Kosas died also, you know, because of, 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 of Nele's false prophecy. But Nsikana remembered this and he thought, no, this guy's wrong. He said nothing about the ancestors chasing the British. So Nsikana then started uh, criticizing uh, Nele, Makanda. Nele was actually a false prophet because he was demanding, uh, for example, if you want him to maybe help divine your problem, he would actually uh, ask for a cattle. You must bring a cow you know, before, before I do that. So, whereas in Zikana never asked anything from his own people. He was doing everything, you know, preaching, you know, the message uh, which he dreamt, you know, free of charge. Nzikana was also engaged in a peaceful coexistence with European settlers. He warned Mele, he says, if you attack Gramstown, you will be beaten. So he was beaten. So that's why his followers call him a prophet, you see. The East Cape Opera Company has produced several European and African operas in the last years. Many of the Nkosa people are naturally gifted with good voices. Where are we going to find a Queen of the Night? And then Umkuludi said that he had a Queen of the Night in East London. I said, who? And he said, I'll bring her. She was 19 years of age. And when he told me 19, I said, what? Kills a rascal. Anyway, this young woman came in and she opened her mouth and this extraordinary sound came out. Then we had to see if she could act, and she could act as well. The German was very difficult, and I think what most people don't understand is that German is not as close to African languages as, say, Italian or French is, and I speak French, so the German is very hard, especially pronouncing the omelets. I said to one gentleman last year, I said, have you any idea what you are singing about? He said, no, I do not understand this thing, what I'm singing about. Yeah. Like, such a beautiful rum. 
and raise that sugar rice tea. Uh, they have their own traditions, and you've, you've got to be careful. You don't step on the line with their traditions because you might land up with a problem. She's driving me wild! I'm a You do not call, uh, call, cause a gentleman who are over the age of 60 and have had the circumcision um, operation and the whole ceremony, you do not call them boys, they are men. And I made the mistake of calling one a boy one day and I was given a mouthful. So uh, you, you, these little instant things which you don't normally think about. <laughs> Many of them audition for a very really well-established opera school and opera company in Cape Town. And I actually have lost count of the ones that actually get in there. In South Africa, the, we don't get the support for the arts from the government like uh, we used to do. So there are no grants. The, the, the symphony orchestras, the opera companies, the ballet companies are all dis more or less disappeared. So the question is, where are they going to sing if they want to be professional? In Hawksback, the East Cape Opera Company has a private stage where students can present their first programs. We try to expose them to as much uh, um, sung material as we can so that they can respond to opportunities when they leave. And the theatre is, it takes 36 people, so it's a, it's a kickoff for all our tours. Yeah, it's just been a dream of mine that I've always had since I was a child because I was singing at a very young age. At the moment I'm in the third year of my Bachelor of Music degree and I also teach boys part-time at two of the high schools here in Grahamstown because I think there's a lack of music education and just generally music schools that can teach children regardless of whether they have the money to learn or not. I think I would like to sing a lot more and I'd like to go overseas and be taught by someone from there because I think they have a lot to give and a lot to learn. Nsikana's message has been quite important for Nkosa people, especially for one of the most prominent members of this people group, Nelson Mandela. Among the founders of the ANC were leading members of the Nsikana Association. In the 1960s, 1962-63, this Nirvonia trial, because Mandela and others, they said, the only way we're going to get our freedom is by fighting. So then they decided to fight. But until then, the ANC was not for fighting. The ANC was to try peacefully to talk to the whites, to try to get a share in the country, and they were never given it. <laughs> the post-apartheid system in South Africa allows sharing cultural and religious knowledge with people from all over the world. When you look at you know the message of Nsikana, it resembles the, the message of Mandela, because when Mandela came out of prison, he also continued preaching the same message, which was preached by Nsikana, you know, a message of uh, uh, reconciliation, that people should you know, forgive one another. He did not you know, uh, encourage people to fight back or to revenge. You know, after being you know, in prison you know, at Robben Island, 
for so many years. You know, he came, but you know, he had a heart, you know, to forgive, you know, to even encourage other people to forget and and and, and make peace with one another. The prophet Nzikana. After 200 years, he's still a role model for politics, society, and music in South Africa. Once upon a time, there was a man called Nsikana who warned Tosa people and wanted them to unite and who wanted the people to accept God for the first time in the Eastern Cape. Nsikana was their prophet. He was their prophet and his song was their song. And it showed them that they were people the same as the whites. And not only that they were people the same as the whites, that they were called to be Christians the same as the whites. Oh, 